Namaskar. Good evening and welcome to Sunset Television. You are watching the news with Rajiv Kumar Singh. Over the next half an hour, we will get you all the important national and international developments. News that you are concerned with and news that matters to you. Be it political, economic, business or from sports. And yes, we bring you a few offbeat stories too. First up, the headlines of the day. Ensuring development is in border areas important part of India's defence strategy, says Rajnath Singh. Defence Minister asserts government's priority is to provide facilities to those who guard borders. 26 lakh new DMAT accounts open every month in 2021-22. At the Silver Jubilee celebrations of NSDL, Union Finance Minister says young investors revealing appetite to take risks. Vice President M. Venkaiah Naidu lays stress on strict enforcement of environmental laws, urges efforts to make environment protection a mass movement. Threat of cyclonic storm recedes over coasts of Andhra Pradesh and Odisha. Fishermen advise not to go into sea for next few days. President Rajapaksha imposes emergency in Sri Lanka. Protests continue. Countries across the world express concern. Let's take a quick look at some more important news of the day. Blast triggers fire at Tata Steel Plant in Jamshedpur. Three people injured. Health ministers of various states criticise WHO's estimate of 4.7 million COVID-related deaths in India. Centre notifies appointment of Justice Sudhanshu Dhulia and Justice J.B. Pardiwala as Supreme Court judges. Fresh spell of heat wave likely to begin over Haryana, Delhi, UP, MP and Vidarbha from Saturday. Central India from Sunday. Over 3,65,000 teleconsultations conducted over e Sanjeevni, says Health Minister Dr. Mansuk Mandavia. Government making efforts to minimize imports of thermal coal and make country Atmanirbhar, says Union Coal Minister. Punjab Chief Minister announces to procure move on MSP, move aimed at giving impetus to crop diversification in state. Sports Minister Anurag Thakur launches logo, anthem, jersey and mascot for Kelo India in Panchkula, Haryana. 5.2 magnitude earthquake in Pakistan's Balochistan province destroys at least 80 houses. 200 families rendered homeless. U.S. investigates 109 childhood cases of mysterious form of hepatitis, including five reported deaths. News now in detail. Providing maximum facilities to those who guard India's borders is top priority for those in the government, asserted Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Saturday. Addressing a border roads organisation event, he said ensuring the development of border areas is also a major part of the government's comprehensive defence strategy. The Defence Minister praised the BRO for improving the infrastructure in the border areas. उन्नीस सौ साठ में सिर्फ दो प्रोजेक्ट से बढ़कर यह अब 18 प्रोजेक्ट तक पहुंच गया है मुझे बताया गया है कि बी द्वारा 60,000 किलोमीटर से अधिक सड़कों और 850 प्रमुख ब्रिज और 19 हवाई पट्टियों और फोर सुरंगों का निर्माण किया जा चुका है यह कोई छोटी मोटी उपलब्धि नहीं है किसी इंस्टीट्यूशन की यात्रा में the low pressure area over South Andaman Sea is likely to intensify into a cyclonic storm and reach the Andaman, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha coast early next week.
According to the Meteorological Department, the weather system is likely to move northwestwards and turn into a pressure area over South Andaman Sea and adjoining Southeast Bay of Bengal. In view of the cyclonic storm, thunderstorms and heavy rain have also been predicted in some West Bengal districts from Tuesday to Friday. According to the Odisha government, the Disaster Response Force and the fire services are on standby for any emergency. Southern districts are expected as per the latest bulletin to be more vulnerable. So we are alerting all the, the um, concerned fire officers and deputy fire officers, AFOs, to remain on high alert. And the leave of all the officers have been asked uh, to, uh, have been, uh, asked to be cancelled and uh, nobody should go on leave without uh, emergencies also. Union Health Minister Dr. Mansuk Mandavia on Saturday underscored the significance of teleconsultations. Calling it the future of health systems in India, he urged efforts to promote it in a big way. Mandavia was addressing the concluding ceremony of the three-day Swasti Chintan Shivir at Kevariya in Gujarat. He also advised the state governments to spread awareness about the Mira Hospital portal. लोग भागीदारी में इस तरह से सुनिश्चित कर रहे हैं कि हमारे जनप्रतिनिधि हो हमारे इंडस्ट्रियल इंस्टीट्यूट हो हमारे ऑफिसर्स हो या तो कोई व्यक्ति हो अपना गांव अपना विधानसभा क्षेत्र अपना ब्लॉक अपना डिस्ट्रिक्ट वो गोद ले ले एडॉप्ट करे और सब लोग उसमें एक जॉइंट एफर्ट लगाए जिसके माध्यम से देश को दो के अंत के पहले हम टीबी मुक्त कर पाए 26 lakh new DMAT accounts were opened every month in financial year 2021-22. Their number was 14 lakh per month in 2020-21 and 7 lakh in 2019-20. Stating this, on Saturday, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said it shows the willingness and risk appetite of young investors. She was addressing the Silver Jubilee celebrations of National Securities Depository Limited in Mumbai. The finance minister also launched the Market Ka Eklavya program to increase investor awareness. 26 lakh new DMAT accounts per month in 21-22. And if that is the kind of growth we are seeing in the new DMAT accounts, I'm not giving you cumulative figures, new DMAT accounts, you can see that there is an appetite for taking risk, but people would like to definitely be more informed about what actually happens. Can they be better performing? What are the kind of risks they have to face? There is a lot of word of mouth happening. In news from other parts of the country, LIC's IPO shares can be bought on Sunday as well. RBI has directed all banks to keep their branches open for the same. The IPO issue will be open till Monday, May 9th. Share prices of the corporation has been kept between 902 and 949 rupees. With two new judges, the Supreme Court will meet its sanctioned strength of 34 judges. The new judges will take oath early next week. Prime Minister Modi has urged people to take part in a logo design competition on India's G20 presidency. The Ministry of External Affairs has invited logo designs to the competition. The contest will be open from today till 7th of the next month. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari has said he wants to develop at least one vehicle scrapping centre within a radius of 150 kilometres from each city. Old and obsolete vehicles will be replaced by new and less polluting vehicles in a phased manner. He said the vehicle scrappage policy of the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways will give an opportunity to investors of all types and sizes to open scrap centers. The NGT has imposed a fine of Rs 41.21 crore on the Telangana-based Singareni Collieries Company Limited for violating environment clearance and mining in excess of permissible limits. 
SCCL is a public sector undertaking. 3,805 new COVID-19 cases have been reported in the last 24 hours. The number of patients under treatment is 0.05% of the total cases of infection. The recovery rate is 98.74%. Daily rate of infection was 0.78% and the weekly infection rate of 0.79%. 190 crore doses of anti-COVID vaccines have been given in the country. Over 3 crore children in the age group of 12 to 14 years have taken the first dose of anti-COVID-19 vaccine. 9,95,265 people in the 18 to 59 year group have been given precautionary doses. Prime Minister Modi on Saturday said the National Education Policy 2020 is being implemented with the objectives of increasing access, participation, inclusivity and quality of education. He said this at a high-level meeting to review the progress in implementing the NEP. The Prime Minister said a hybrid system of online and offline learning should be developed to protect school-going children from exposure to excessive technology. The national curriculum framework is being prepared under the guidance of the National Steering Committee. Vice President M. Vinkoyan Aydu was has called uh, for a mass movement for environmental protection. He was inaugurating the International Conference on Environment Diversity and Environmental Jurisprudence in Mohali. The Vice President said efficient policies and collective public efforts are needed to limit the impact of climate change. The Vice President stressed the need to make a special bench for environmental law and take environmental justice to the people. So the society must be made to understand the importance of this. Water management, soil conservation, forestry and also the other common purposes, they had to be effectively, collectively implemented. The grassroots level bodies at the local level, they should make the people to participate in the decision making and also in implementation. Time for a short break here. On the other side, as European nations rush to find alternatives to energy supplies from Russia, biogas could be one solution. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at all the latest developments from the war front in Ukraine. The UN Security Council, including permanent members of Russia, on Friday adopted a presidential statement that expresses deep concern regarding the maintenance of peace and security in Ukraine. It was the first unanimous statement on the war over two months after the Russian invasion. The 15-nation UN Security Council, under the current monthly presidency of the US, unanimously adopted the brief presidential statement. The powerful Security Council also expressed a strong support for the efforts of Secretary General Antonio Guterres in the search for a peaceful solution. India has said that diplomacy and dialogue should be the only viable option to end the ongoing war in Ukraine. And no solution can be found to this problem by shedding blood. We continue to remain deeply concerned at the worsening situation in Ukraine and reiterate call for immediate cessation of violence and end to hostility. We believe that there will be no winning side in this conflict and while everyone impacted by it will continue to suffer, diplomacy will be a lasting casualty. And in other updates on the Ukraine conflict. Several missiles hit the southern Ukrainian port city of Odessa. 
officials say the strikes hit the city after targets in the surrounding Odessa region were hit by four missiles earlier in the day. In Kharkiv, a Russian missile destroyed a Ukrainian museum dedicated to the life and work of an 18th century philosopher. Ukrainian emergency services shared photographs of the Grigory Skovada Museum engulfed in flames. As an indication of his importance to Ukraine's culture, heritage Skovada's likeness adorns a Ukrainian banknote. The International Committee of the Red Cross hopes the successful evacuation of civilians from the besieged steel plant in Mariupol will pave the way for more people to get out of the complex. Fifty more people were evacuated from the besieged Azovstal steel factory in the city of Mariupol. Scores of civilians have been trapped for weeks alongside the remaining Ukrainian forces holding out in the bombed-out plant. Russia has held its final rehearsal for an annual parade making the Soviet victory in World War II, where its military might will be showcased amid Moscow's campaign in Ukraine. To mark the 77th anniversary since victory in what Russia calls the Great Patriotic War, thousands of soldiers will march across the Red Square in Moscow on Monday, followed by tanks, armored vehicles and missile launchers. Russia is showcasing 77 aircraft, including the rarely seen Ilyusin 80 doomsday plane that is capable of withstanding a nuclear attack. News now from other parts of the world. Protesters rallied in front of the Presidential Secretariat of Sri Lanka in Colombo on Saturday to voice their concern about the state of emergency and the use of force by police on peaceful protesters. President Gotabaya Rajapaksha issued a decree declaring a public emergency on Friday. It allows the government to make regulations in the interest of public security and for the maintenance of essential supplies. Trade unions have warned of continued strikes from May 11th if the Rajapaksha brothers do not resign by then. The government said on Saturday that the emergency will help create necessary conditions for negotiations with the IMF and other agencies for financial assistance. And in other news from across the world, 22 people, including a child, were killed after a powerful explosion apparently caused by a natural gas leak blew away outer walls from a luxury hotel, Saratoga, in the heart of Cuba's capital, Havana. Firefighters are trying to recover more bodies buried under the rubble. No tourists were staying in the 96-room hotel because of it was undergoing renovations and was to reopen on May 10th. The health minister said the number of injured could rise as the search continues. 74 people were injured in the explosion, while the identity of those killed will be known in the next few hours. French Prime Minister Jean Castex and former French, French presidents Nicolas Sarkozy and Francois Hollande arrived on Saturday to attend Emmanuel Macron's second presidential inauguration ceremony. Macron was re-elected for five years on April 24th in a runoff that saw him beat a far-right rival Marine Le Pen. At the start of the ceremony, the president of the Constitutional Council read out the results of the election. He said that in accordance with the French constitution, Macron has been Elected President of the French Republic for a five-year term that begins on 14th of May at midnight. Italy has stopped a mega yacht from sailing away from a Tuscan port after an investigation indicated that it has links to prominent elements of the Russian government. 
a probe carried out by Italy's financial police corps found significant economic business links of the beneficial owner of the Scherzade as well as other subjects included in a list issued in 2014 as part of the European Union measures prompted by Russia's annexation of Crimea from Ukraine. Israel's army released a footage showing the demolition of the house of a Palestinian suspect of killing a Jewish settler last year. The demolition destroyed one floor of the house identified as belonging to suspect attacker Omar Ahmad Yassin Jaradar. Palestinian gunmen opened fire on a car carrying Jewish seminary students next to a West Bank settlement outpost in the December 16 attack. Jaradat and three other suspects were arrested soon after the attack. The European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen is confident that the bloc would soon approve a new package of sanctions against Russia. She told a news conference that they were moving in the right direction, holding talks with countries who are not yet prone to approve the sanctions. Pragmatic issues were discussed like what alternatives can bring oil to these countries. Nations across Europe are looking for ways to replace Russian energy supplies with domestically produced alternatives. Farmers in a village near Paris are doing their bit to solve the European energy puzzle. Take a look at this report. Farmers in France are looking for a way around the Europe's embargo on Russian fuel. Their solution is biogas. This new facility near Paris is one attempt to convert crops and agricultural waste into energy through fermentation. The process is much like food left too long in a container. The gas produced here is supplied to households. This particular facility took nearly a year and a half to get going. It produces enough gas to meet the needs of 2,000 homes. The farmers received a 1 million euro state subsidy to build the plant. While being assured of a stable income from the sale of their gas, but heaps of agro-waste begs the question of diversion of resources for generating fuel at a time when countries are facing acute food shortages. However, for now, the European Union is looking to scale up production of biomethane, 83 billion euros, which is less than EU's 27 nations pay per year to Russia for piped natural gas. It is calculated to produce a tenfold increase in biomethane production by 2030. This could help replace almost a fifth of what the bloc imported from Russia last year. Bureau report, Sunset TV. American agencies are relying on a new method of uh, measuring snow as climate change makes uh, traditional water forecasting methods less reliable. The aerial surveys are expected to help water managers take tough decisions across the western states of the U.S. In Colorado's Rocky Mountains, it's that time of the year between snow season and runoff season, when high winds whip up the snow around. This year, water managers are using a new method to calculate how much water is stored in the snow. Airborne snow observatories flies planes that contain lasers, sensors and cameras to map the snow. It gives drought-prone communities more precise forecasts of how much water from melting snow will fill reservoirs. The method was developed at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. For decades, states measured snow through remote sensing sites known as snowtill stations. But with temperatures rising due to climate change and snow at around 9,000 feet above sea level melting earlier than normal, the measuring stations are not a reliable indicator. At such elevations, wind-whipped snow can move around throughout the day and measuring a single point could see dramatic daily fluctuations. That's where aerial surveying comes in. Now more communities are hoping to improve forecasting with aerial snow mapping that gives snow measurements accurate within two inches across an entire river basin. But for now, the technology has a much higher price tag than what local water agencies are used to do. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. Sotheby's auction house on Friday showed off the highlights of its spring sale.
The latest sale of 800 artworks is expected to match the sales of last fall when the auction house set a company record by selling over $1.3 billion worth of art. The current auction features a 1932 painting by Pablo Picasso, Orpheus Lava, tilted portrait of Mary Therese Welter. It is estimated to sell for more than $60 million. A painting by Francis Bacon called A Pope is expected to sell for $40 to $60 million. It depicts Bacon's lover on the right who later killed himself. The New York auction house expects a 1975 painting by Gerhard Richter tilted seascape to go for $25 to $35 million. A 1963 silk screen of Elvis Presley by Andy Warhol is expected to sell for $15 to $25 million. And before we wrap this bulletin, a relook at the headlines. Ensuring development in border areas, important part of India's defence strategy, says Rajna Singh. Defence Minister asserts government's priority is to provide facilities to those who guard borders. 26 lakh new DMAT accounts opened every month in 2021-22. At the Silver Jubilee celebrations of NSDL, Union Finance Minister says... Young investors revealing appetite to take risks. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu lays stress on strict enforcement of environmental laws, urges efforts to make environment protection a mass movement. Threat of cyclonic storm recedes over the coasts of Andhra Pradesh and Odisha. Fishermen advise not to go into sea for next few days. President Rajapaksha imposes emergency in Sri Lanka. Protesters continue. Countries across the world express concern. That's all we have time for in this bulletin. Keep watching Sunset Television for more updates. Good night.